Rivers Crisis. Outgun chairman accuses Fubara wearing gunmen, all this to cause mayor must be assembly, says to screen 23 CTC chairman members today. I am Bola Oba and this is Plus Politics. Apparently displeased by the turn of events in River State, the Algon Council Chairman of the Korean local government area and a trusted political associate of the Fed FCT Minister Yeson Wike, Dr. Samuel Wanusike, has accused the state governor, Simona Infobara, and the chief of staff, Honorable Edison Eye, of Ari Countess and government to cause in the 23 local government councils. Anosike, in a trending video on Tuesday, alleged that the governor of Uba went to the Greeks and had government and brought them to the state, and brought them to the state, quote, going about LGA, by LGA shooting and looting the properties, unquote, of the councils, particularly that of equally local government area. However, the River State House of Assembly, led by Honorable Victor Okujumbo, has summoned the Ketika Committee, CTC, chairman and members from the 23 local government areas for a screening session today. From conducting local government election. Our chairman has his ears. Nobody wants to stay beyond his tenure. But we run a constitutional democracy. Where everything is by the law, the grand norm. And we must ask ourselves, what did the grand norm say about local government, the territory of government? Is that must be governed by elected uh, council chairman. And for whatever reason, if the governor of the state refused to conduct local government election, and great trust in the House of Assembly has extended our tenure, what fault is it of ours? It's never our fault. People rather should be asking the governor, why did you not conduct local government election when these, these persons at the tenure were running uh, over? Okay. We were in River State, I challenge everybody. There was no time the state said they want to conduct election and somebody took them to court to conduct uh, election. election. There was no time I challenged. Yes. That they want to conduct election and the state people say don't conduct election. He deliberately refused to conduct election. So that as brothers, we will kill ourselves. We are Calabari people, I want us to be wise. Okay. Everybody, there is no, no, there is one, no one life. That is not important than the council chairman of this uh, local government or any of our local governments. So we must be wise. Let me also say this. What is happening here now is a defense of democracy. <laughs> we will not allow a wrong president to be created in this country. It is not about River State, it's not about Fawara. But if in any way this attempt of tenor elongation succeeds in River State, it becomes a norm in Nigeria. So we have taken it upon ourselves to say not within our own watch that it will not happen because it's, it, it is completely alien to the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So for those people who are saying the only reason why we want to continue to be in the office is because elections are now conducted, we have more than 85% of the states in Nigeria that are being run by caretaker. Us is different. You have your tenor. You have completed your tenor. It is proper. You let go. And life doesn't create vacuum. If you're not there again, doesn't mean if your tenor has expired, doesn't mean I should say because I want to please you. I will allow you. No, no, it doesn't happen anywhere.
joining us to look at this crisis in the state with the publisher, Christina Reports, Gosul Jumbo. Also joining us is APC spokesperson, Dalintin Waju, and River State Publicity Secretary, Chibuke Ikenga. Gentlemen, welcome to Plus Politics. Thank you for having me. Chief Ikenga. Thank you. How would you want to start? This is supposed to be a very sober day for uh, students of constitutionalism in Nigeria. Uh, but uh, you being a reverse man and being on terra firma, reverse state, how would you want to start? Okay, thank you for having me, Bola, and uh, welcome other participants. I think that uh, we are very concerned as a party in River State about the turn of events. We are concerned because constitutionally, the State House of Assembly was mandated to make laws governing local government administration. And it is on the basis of that, that any laws that local governments in all the states make are in about local governments are in consonance with constitutional provisions. But our concern today more is about the insecurity, the heightened, the exacerbated insecure um, river states. Our citizens have become more threatened by the political instability. And this political instability is coming clearly from the actions and inactions of the government. The government is a henchman in river state, and any breakdown of law and order squarely rests on his shoulders. And that his actions are enabling insecurity, are enabling violence. You have heard, I'm sure you have seen some viral videos, wherein some armed men said they have come, they are supporters of the governor. They have come from the creeks. They are ready to shoot and kill anybody and take over the council by force. And they did that unconstitutionally. They have no powers to do so. But because they believe they have the support of the governor, that's why we have the challenge we have. You also recall that two persons were shot dead yesterday, one policeman and one vigilante. These are some of the challenging times we are going through as reverse people. Take note also, Bola, take note, take note also, Bola, that we have abandoned development, particularly the government is no more talking about development, it's talking about politics, 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 and it's concerning. Thank you. Thank you very much for your introduction. Uh, can I go to the publisher now? Uh, Chief Jumbo, are you there? Yes, I am. Good evening. Good evening, my friend. Uh, I can see a light smile on, on your face. I guess uh, at this juncture, uh, brass knuckle power is prevailing in rivers, and uh, rivers is becoming a test case for real politics. It is all about power now. It's no longer respect for constitutionalism. I would want to start, my friend. Uh, I, I think uh, it's important to cancel out the wrong narrative being put out that the, the governor of River State is more concerned with politics. Uh, is it politics to ask that uh, those whose tenures have expired, they should go home? What is the politics there? You work, you are employed in a company and your contract says you work for three years and your, your, your contract expires on a particular day. And beyond that day, you want to make trouble, you want to fight everybody, you, you want to continue. Somebody uh, did a video and which went viral on social media, threatening the governor, calling him all kind of stupid names, and then saying, threatening the governor that if he is actually properly born, he should come to a local government council that does not belong to him that several people have occupied over the years, and then him now. And then the test case came last night, and he ran away. He ran away. We expected him to wait and let his kind 
It is not the governor that sent them. It is his kind. He called for them and they came looking for him and he ran away. You know, so that is not the issue at stake now. I'm, I'm happy that other guests are interested about constitutionality. What does the constitution require? The constitution says there are three arms of government. The executive, the legislative, the legislature, and the judiciary. If the legislature makes a law for the executive to implement, and the executive finds such law to be inconsistent with common sense or with other aspects of the constitution, it goes to it goes to the judiciary to ask questions. And the judiciary interprets. And in a situation where lawmakers wanted to uh, amend a law, an existing law, nobody says they do not have the power to amend laws. It is within the purview of their mandate as lawmakers. But under review, the judiciary said, no, you cannot amend this law because it is incongruous to the ground norm of the country, which is the constitution. And that's, that is it. So everybody should stand by that. And some people say no. It cannot be. Specifically, which judgment, which judgment are you referring to regarding this? I'm uh, talking about the amendment to the River State Local Government Law 2018. And you said the High said Court in River State oh. has quashed the amendment, clearly declaring that it is such amendment is incongruous to the constitution. And we know the first schedule to the constitution clearly states it that to the extent of incongruity with the constitution, every other law within the, the context of Nigeria becomes null and void. That is where we are. So if the judiciary says okay. the law okay. on which okay. you are banking okay. upon to extend your tenure does not exist, that it is unconstitutional, what do you do? You go home. By the way, if you perform well, if you have done well, you leave when the ovation is loudest. What's the rascality and the uh, miscreancy that we are seeing across? Okay, okay. Uh, Mr. Jumbo, I'll come back to you. Let me, uh, uh, Kenga. Yes, Bola. As the spokesperson of the APC in River State, you just listened to your colleague on this show, Chief Jumbo. Uh, um, Mr. Jumbo, who has clearly stated that there is a subsisting court order that nullifies the, the enactment of the, uh, the House of Assembly elongating the tenure of the, of the chairman, of the former chairman. Uh, do you agree with that? And if that is true, how come some of you are now rationalizing as though the enactment of the House of Assembly automatically prevails above the pronouncement of court? Okay, thank you. I think that um, he made mention of a decision by one Justice Q uh, from the court below. And uh, but, but, my friend... But one, but one justice, but, uh, let's get this right. Uh, he made mention of the decision, uh, and you say by one justice. So it Q. does seem that you don't. You don't. It does seem from the way you have uh, mouthed it as though you don't like the decision of that one justice. And uh, then you know we may be getting into an era of selective, selective respect for judgments. Is, is that what? I'm, is what? I'm no, I like? don't have to. I don't have to like or hate the judgment. The judgment or order is what it is. There is, he made reference to one ruling, interlocutory ruling or interlocutory order by one Justice Q that tended to nullify the laws made by the Martins Amewule led House of Assembly of River States. And upon that decision, the Martins Amehule Letters Assembly went upstairs, went to the Court of Appeal. And about five days ago, or thereabout, the Court of Appeal gave a superior order to the, to the order from Justice Kyo's court 
And that superior order was that the status quo be maintained and that hostilities against opponents must be halted. That is the subsisting order. And that the case has been adjoined to the 20th of June, being tomorrow. That's the latest order about all this. And instead of the PDP and the governor to await that decision that the Court of Appeal will make to strengthen whatever position either of the groups can versus, the governor and his party have taken laws into their hands, destroying the rest by, on his own, declaring that the tenure of the House was the tenure of the council chairman ended, which is subject of litigation. The same way he did with the House Assembly, that they do not exist, which is subject of litigation. So the governor and his party had assumed the position of both the legislative, executive, and judiciary. By making such a pronouncement yesterday and this morning, the governor had given the judgment in a case that is before the Court of Appeal, and that's most unfortunate. So that now has exacerbated the insecurity situation in River State. And then armed talks have been imported and brought in to destabilize the state by, on their own, going to local government councils to intimidate people, breaking the local government council, entering and taking over as if we're in a military government. So these are the concerns we have as a party, and we do not support it. We are Democrats. We believe in the expansion of democracy, and that's what I'll, we are asking. I'll come back to you. I'll come back to you. Um, Mr. Jumbo. Mr. Jumbo, um, it does seem from developments, especially against the fact that there are two major litigations that would have uh, that would have practical effects on the what was supposed to be the status quo. But at this juncture now, folks have seen most of the local government secretariats, and that should ordinarily mean that the status quo has been practically defied. How would you rationalize what is happening uh, in, in the backdrop of the fact that the governor tends to want to give the impression that he's the one respecting the law, when it does seem ostensible, ostensibly now that the governor, through his agents, uh, seems to be defying the pronouncement of the Court of Appeal, status quo antebellum be respected. Okay, I, I think we need to step back from this uh, propensity to want to tell a one story. The story is not one. What is the party's direction in Nigeria? That when a judgment is given, you comply first before you come to appeal. The court has said this amendment is unconstitutional. Has that been obeyed? Has that been complied with? Okay, are we also missing out? Why are we missing out? That critical uh, uh, declaration of the court of appeal that why the status quo should be maintained, that the, 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 the relief sought to stay execution of the High Court's judgment. And it was not an interlocutory order. It was a judgment given over a race that has been decided on. And the appeal court said that that particular relief requesting that this particular uh, judgment should be the stay, there should be a stay of its execution. The appeal court stepped back from granting it. He said the statute court should be, remain, uh, 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 should be maintained and then party should come back on the 20th, which is tomorrow. But your request that this judgment should be stayed, no, we're not granting it. 
that it will mean giving judgment on a case that was yet to be reviewed fully. So why are we stepping back from that? So there's no stay of judge, there's no stay of execution on that judgment. So the governor okay. is not actually acting out of line. He is acting in, in line with the provisions of the law, as clearly okay. declared by the okay. okay. secondly, secondly, who is causing the insecurity? Who was threatening everybody in River State that if they bond them well, they should come? Who is that? The, the people who are threatening, doing videos of them, that they are coming, that so and so people should wait for them. Who trained them? Who armed them? Who equipped them with the tools they are using? They, they, we saw reverse people on social media across very LGAs. There were no arms with them. There was no stick, no broom, no club, nothing. They were empty handed. They were just at the local councils. Because the local government, it is a grassroots government. And the people clustered there and were singing and dancing. Okay, Publisher, they were not Publisher, carrying I out. So when you say insecurity, Publisher. who is causing the insecurity? Gabriel Asabuja, who armed him? Who trained him? Hello, hello. Welcome back to you. Uh, Darlington, I'm aware, Darlington, that you are, you are those uh, only on audio. Can you hear me, Darlington? Yes, please. Yes, please. Good evening, Mr. Ola. Good evening. Uh, philosopher Darlington, you often go in the direction of uh, constitutional theory. But mm. the more you theorize, the more we see deterioration for deterioration in the respect for constitutionalism in your state. I wonder what is your take? of the furore that is ongoing now or the impasse that is ongoing now in rivers well uh, good evening for, uh, thank you for having me once again uh, i would not detour or deviate from the routes that i have always taken in such a very sensitive issues uh, given the fact that it would be most preferable to err on the side of the law and uh, on the side of constitutionalism. Uh, if I should uh, jump in from the very last comments by uh, Mr. Gross with Jumbo, I would like to further uh, infer that, or further emphasize the fact that there were indeed 11 paragraphs, 11 motions moved before the Court of Appeal sitting in Port Harcourt. Uh, paragraphs 1 to 4 were granted, whereas paragraph 5 to 11 we are turned down, including the paragraphs that uh, John Bro just mentioned. So for somebody to stand on something that is completely non-existent, to make arguments that the tenureship of uh, local government uh, council officials uh, have been extended, or that the judgment by Justice uh, Daketima Q has been set aside is completely misleading. And I would not be part of such a public discourse. We are in the clear judgment of the uh, state high court is being uh, misrepresented. I would not uh, be part of such an argument. Uh, Darlington, uh, yes. my first question to you now that we now have a festival of legal obfuscation in rivers. You people, out of your uh, tendency to be to be ultra litigious, you have so so polluted the polity with too many litigations that. Uh, we would only need professors of law to keep touch with. Uh, <laughs> I'm telling you, the plethora of uh, pronouncements, judgments, and uh, orbiter dicta out there. But are you, in simple terms, are you of the opinion that the tenure of the council chairman? Has indeed expired, or a new one who believes that the enactment of the Amewuli House of Assembly has given life to the six month extension. 
Where do you stand? I stand on the clear facts that the tenureship of elected officials of council in River State expired on the 17th day of June 2024. That is where I stand. Thank you very much. I'll get back to you later. Uh, you Chief Kenga. I'm on. Uh, Chief Kenga, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, before I tell, before I implore you to address the the substantive submission of uh, of uh, Darlington, what if I want to be cheeky and I say that your party, your party is a mischievous interloper in this case? After all, a court of competent jurisdiction has declared that the Amewule the Amegule 24 or 25 uh, cannot be said to be members of the APC. If PDP, like you know, Yoruba, Yoruba uh, street lingo would say, if a particular set of people are, are killing themselves, what would be the problem of the APC in the ongoing furore between uh, PDP factions? Of PDP, PDP uh, politicians. So, just addressing that, what is the problem now that the APC River State has regarding the ongoing developments? Okay, APC as a party, we are Democrats. We are progressives. We are interested in expansion of democracy and constitutionality. That's don't our make, interest. No, don't, don't, make me, don't make, give me the impression that I'm watching a Libaba or basketball. Uh, That's you, what you know, if you say PC uh, is uh, you are Democrats, you are this thing. Uh, somebody was just telling me silently that after all, you are holding an interim position. Was it that you were elected to the position as the, as the spokesperson of APC? Uh, is that democracy? What kind of democracy okay. is that? No, it is. In our party, our party constitution provided for committees and in this case, including caretaker committees for the proper running of the party should uh, circumstances that will lead to constitution of caretaker committees arise. It's constitutional. It's in our constitution. Be that as it may, our interest as a party, the APC in River State, the Imbroglio in River State, is that we believe in constitutionality. We believe in expansion of democracy. And we believe in the protection of lives and property in River State. We also believe in proper development of the state, provision of goods and services. Oh. And because the puzzle, the disagreement, the crisis in the PDP and the problem Governor Fubara has with his benefactor is beginning to take a huge toll on the people of River State, particularly their lives are no more secure their properties are no more secure there's no development abandonment of governance and all that transparency and accountability these are some of the issues but quickly let me respond to jumbo i have on several occasions where i appeared on this plus tv africa condemned loquacious politicians who insult highly placed persons particularly the governor of river state the minister of the fct or the president of nigeria i don't support such level of brigandage so i have kicked against all those who did so whether they're my friends or associates and i'll continue to do so like the recent persons who have done the same thing threatening fire and brimstone i have always stood against such things because we don't need it in our society but for them they are interested once it's against them they oppose it and once their own members are threatening people, they applaud it. I don't believe in that. We are one reverse people, and we should deal with constitutionality. We should deal with the expansion of democracy. Finally, on the issue of the courts, let me say clearly what the court said. Anybody is entitled to interpreting and stating whatever the position is. I have said that the court of appeal did say that the status quo be maintained and that people should refrain from hostilities pending the determination of the tools that will determine all these issues whether the House of assembly under martin is properly constituted and has powers to make laws particularly and 
and in this case, the extension of tenure as a result of the failure of the government to conduct in local government elections. And again, that no action should be taken to tamper with the rest. That is the position. That's the, the order. And anybody that has taken any position, like the governor and the PDP, have taken positions to tamper with the rest, to destroying the rest, and then creating insecurity and hostilities against members of uh, the, the against citizens of the state. It's uncalled for. Finally, the, uh, Mr. Jumbo said that people uh, enter the councils, it's a public place, they just sat down singing a prison. You are aware that somebody, somebody, a police officer was shot in a moment and killed, and a vigilante was shot and killed. He didn't mention that. We are troubled by the loss of lives, loss of properties, you saw cars that were damaged, and then if government does not come in to stem the tide of this violence, it may snowball into a full-blown war. That is what we are against, and that's our interest. Okay. Uh, Mr. Jumbo. Patricia Jumbo. I'm with you. You cannot, as a prominent member of the fourth estate, especially in a state as strategic as rivers, you should not be seen supporting what is ostensibly illegality. And uh, when, when forgy dodgy characters go into local government secretariats and they practically deploy the violence to achieve their aim, I would ordinarily suppose that somebody in such a strategic position as you should be should be straightforwardly condemning such acts. But it does seem that uh, you are not condemning them as lucidly enough as you should be doing, or you are just uh, taking cynical this out of it. What would be your response to that? Well, anybody who knows me knows me. I am I'm very straightforward about issues. We, for those of us who saw the videos online, we know in Asari Toro, in Degema, in Akokotoro local council secretaries, the people did not enter the secretaries. They were outside, outside the gates. It was the workers themselves that opened the gates. The crowd that was there, the videos are online. So they are not like we are doctoring them. They are there. Now, in fact, for us, we had to deploy across the state and get visuals where possible we can get them. And where we could not, we had to leave it. But we saw that those crowds of rivers people made up of men women and children were unarmed and did not break the gates as alleged in equity lga the chairman himself was the one who gathered the crowd it was not external entities it was himself who gathered the crowd there and was dancing and singing with them and declaring it a one-week cultural festival if i see something wrong i will condemn it just like i'm querying now, the people who are merchants of violence in River State, who trained them, who armed them, who empowered them, who are asking the questions, we, we are the fourth step of the realm. We do not align. We do not align at all. We take a stand on issues and we look at them clearly, just like we are talking about the court case. If you ask it, Mwaju has, you know, Consolidated Jumbo. that position that that the the Jumbo. that particular relief yes. If you are asking that rhetorical question, you could also uh, elongate the question to countenance the fact that the the person for whom these untoward characters are now uh, supposedly or purportedly defending the constitution for. Who brought him to office? Who paid his? Who paid his for? Who paid all the necessary electioneering campaigns? And what was their with their agreement? Or he just did it because he did it because he wanted to go to heaven? 
Okay, uh, well, if, if I, I think I, I think that is not an issue. I can stay somewhere inside one of my rooms, or maybe in Ikenga's house, and both of us agree that look, even uh, I'm going to get the phone for you, and this is what is going to happen, and all of that. But once you will get into that environment that is controlled by the constitution of Nigeria, any agreement that is between me and Ikenga or between me and Darlington that does not agree with the constitution becomes null and void. And by the way, the person who supposedly bought form and installed a so 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 person as governor, he himself, people also bought forms for him. Did they decide for him what to do? So almost everybody in River State, forms were bought for them. So, so that is why for me, it is a non-issue. Like Ikenga started with constitutionality. We should stay with that. Everybody should align with the constitution. If the constitution says sit down, you sit down. If it says stand up, let's not interpret the constitution of court judgment to the, to the, to the extent it favors or does not favor us. No, we shouldn't do that. We, we can't turn river states to a laughing stock. Check their algorithms. When, when, you, when you search for river state on Google, on Yahoo, or any other search engine, what pops up? Political rhetoric, violence, you know, and all of that. And that's not good for us. So for, for me, on this program and several other programs, I've insisted we should allow the governor to work. And the governor has focused. By the way, just days ago, he had an economic summit, economic and investment summit. And a lot of sign-ups were made with critical stakeholders, investors who are coming to bring the investment to the state. Now, most of those investment drives will not see the light of day if the local uh, uh, areas, the grassroots, the governance structure in the grassroots are not in place. The legal framework, the, the, the ease of doing business, uh, you know, frameworks, they have to be driven by the local government if they are not in place. So what happens if, for instance, if an investor comes to Boni, he cannot just walk around. The first thing anybody, whether a chief, a community leader will ask him, is the government aware you are here? And that is why the governor is focused on making sure that constitutionalism reigns in the grassroots and you know to, to close to, to you know deploy a stopgap measure he said okay between this time when the tenure of these uh, people have ended and when we are bringing in a new government the heads of local government administration naturally by law you know they should that's constitutionality you know and then the, the caretaker community know, which is still an enemy and may I inform you, I, I'm, just, I'm just being sent, you know, an invite of a stakeholders meeting called by the River State Independent Electoral Commission. You know, they're inviting all classes of stakeholders, traditional rulers, politicians, everybody to come to discuss the next election. That is the governor at work. Can we allow him to get these things right? Jumbo. Why, yes. why, why has he chosen to do it this belatedly when he had every, every you know, time in the world to have met the constitutional order of setting up uh, the State Independent Electoral Commission on time, making sure that the council elections was announced at the requisite constitutionally stated time? Why is he doing it belatedly? Why? Okay, I'll answer your question in two parts. I will take the trivia, then we'll come to the serious. The trivia is that some people, you know, decided to make the state ungovernable. And then they wanted to, uh, you know, push him, get his back on the wall. Well, he played along, expecting them to come to their senses. They even dragged him before the president and made him to sign off on an agreement that was unconstitutional, irrational, and unacceptable. Just for the peace to reign in the state, he accepted. And he gave it some time. And then what happened? And then they decided to make fun of him. We witnessed it now. It was all over. It was in the media. It was in social media and everywhere. 
Now come to the serious. There is no provision in the constitution or any other law declaring, defining a clear timeline for when local government elections should hold. Unlike INEC, we can check, even in the law establishing the River State Independent Electoral Commission, what is the timeline? What are the dates stated? So the governor is making the best of it. And I think he deserves commendation. I'm not saying it because, by the way, I have said it on this program that I quit politics 26th of January 2016. So I'm not saying what I'm saying because of politics. Uh, my brother, like the other time you asked me in the program, my brother is the speaker of the River State House of Assembly. But ask him, I don't call him, I don't chat him up. You understand? So I'm not saying what I'm saying because of any secondary I'm saying that the right things should be done. And uh, anybody who understands the Constitution of Nigeria and the implicit responsibilities placed on state houses of assembly on matters that pertaining to legislating for local government councils knows that what you have just stated now is an intellectually convenient position to accommodate what is utterly wrong in the case of fortunately in the case of rivers but no, let, me, let, let me go to that the, the, the head is back. not on top of the body that in because it is coming okay. no okay. It's come back to me. That if it does not exist it does not exist that darlington hello darlington are you still there Okay, uh, if Darlington is not uh, if Darlington is no longer with us, let, let me go to Ikenga. Ikenga. Yes, Bola. Uh, we are where we are now. The Fubara, uh, the Fubara, like the Germans we say, Panza. Uh, that's the Fubara. This creek is on now. Uh, all. All opposing elements within the rivers polity, uh, there have been those who are not moving, have been shifted. I guess uh, I, 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 I we have not even had the chairman in the last couple of days, I guess, because the court has pronounced that uh, the, the Amelie faction members of the House of Assembly. I cannot be said to belong to APC. So beyond the finesse of constitutionalism that you are here to defend, uh, I guess uh, now you guys can only sit down and, and watch what is happening. How would you respond to that? Okay, quickly, before I come to that, I'd like to correct some impressions uh, made by Jumbo. Firstly, he is partisan. Is from the same ethnic stock with the governor Fubara, and his brother is one of the gladiators that had created the crisis in the River State House of Assembly. That is Oko Jumbo, the House of Assembly member. That's his uh, brother. So for him to come to the public here to offend ignorance, that's total fallacy. Secondly, he lied clearly when he said that the local government law did not prescribe dates and time for elections to be held. I have been a commissioner in River State Independent Electoral Commission from 2000 to 2005. I was a near commissioner there. The law gave 90 days to the expiration of the tenure for elections to be conducted. So every law, every local government law that has to um, deal with the local government elections had time set for those elections. So for him to say so is totally and completely misleading. But be that as it may, like you said, we, become, we, we have become watchers. We are interested um, people. We have interest because we want proper things to be done in River State. We want elections at local government level to be conducted as at when due. And failure to do so is what has led to the crisis. And the crisis is for that first time and enabled by the further unconstitutional acts of the governor. That's why we are interested. We are strategic and important stakeholders in the in the reverse uh, vision.
So we must be part of it and speak up when it is necessary. More so, we are the opposition party and our primary responsibility is to point out to the failures of government, particularly when they veer off from good governance, transparency and accountability. And then as we have today, there is absolute insecurity in the state, exacerbated, encouraged, enabled by the actions and inactions of Governor Sin Fubara and his party, the PDP. We all know they have a history of disobedience to court orders and judgments and rulings, and that is what is thriving in the state. And we are saying, no, we are opposed to it. We must live in an organized society where laws are respected, where the organs of government work interdependently and no one is dependent on the other. And we are against intimidation from the executive to the judiciary or to the House of Assembly. That is where we are. We are not just onlookers. We are participants. We are trusted parties. And that's why we are speaking up. Thank you very much, Chikinga. Um, I'll still come back to you for your wrap up, but let me go to uh, Jumbo now. Jumbo, how would you want to respond to all the, uh, all the, um, the, the barrage of the uh, accusations? How I lied and how I did not lie and how I said okay. it I did not okay. say. Okay. Yeah, but let me add pointedly. The APC, represented by Kenga here, says they are the respecters of the rule of law. Nnamdi Kanu has had several court orders that he should be released. Has the APC under Buhari or the APC under Tinubu released him? Are you fishing? Uh, there are court orders. No, we are talking of APC here. We are talking of APC. The, the chameleon is the chameleon. The leopard is the leopard. The elephant is the elephant. The snake is the snake. In this case, we are talking of a party that has nothing to do with the rule of law. How did even the APC win the 2023 election? So let's not go there. Let's not begin to. We are, are you, because are you also, we want to. Are you also okay, your position. To, are you also speaking to how the APC River State? Are you also speaking to how the governor, to how, the governor is wrong? To and that is their own definition of opposition, right? The the definition of opposition by the APC in River State is to condemn the governor serially, serially in a generic way. Nothing is wrong with anybody else, with anything else. Even, even last time we met here, I was asking, has the governor ever interfered with the sitting of the House of Assembly, whether led by uh, Martin Samenwili, whether led by Edison Ehi, whether led by Victor Kojombo? Has the governor ever interfered? It has been a legislative team. Even the people going to court, it, there is nowhere in fact, the governor is being added as a respondent. Why is the APC so fixated in condemning the governor? He signed a stupid, you know, uh, how would I put it, an unconstitutional agreement just for peace to reign. Yet he is wrong. He restrained himself from all the barrage of uh, amendments, uh, uh, ripping him of his powers and all of that. He kept his calm. Yet he is wrong. He, he brings investors and says, look at River State, we want you to come and jumpstart the economy, uh, yet he is wrong. Everything about the governor is wrong, but everything about the people that the APC River State supports is right. They, they are even ready to turn the provisions, the declarations of courts, different courts, upside down, trying to make us, to gaslight us, just for the purpose of their own brand of opposition. Okay. I think it is, it is a wrong narrative. They need to get it right. Opposition, <laughs> when you want to play opposition in the quality, you stay with okay. it. I think it's about time it. we wrapped it up. I think it's about time we wrapped it up in view of the fact that the two of you seem to be uh, rehashing the points you made times and times over. Gentlemen, I can only Thank you for the sacrifices of uh, participating virtually on this show. I hope and pray that 
common sense and good judgment will prevail in rivers. Rivers stage is too strategic to Nigeria for, for it to discombobulate. So we pray that it does not degenerate any further from where we are. Uh, but having said that too, you are voices that are respected in your communities. Please preach peace. Gentlemen, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. To those who are watching and those who are following uh, what we have been discussing, I want to say thank you. This is where we wrap it up for today. My name is Tim Pelaba. Have a good evening. Thank you for having me, Bola.